Thanks for watching. If you find my videos helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And please look in the description beneath this video for useful links to other videos and resources to help you learn chemistry. For today's video, I'm going to teach you how to answer the question shown here. I invite you to pause the video right now and try this question on your own first, then hit play and I'll show you how to do it. This interesting question requires us to understand the principle of resonance. Now, because this molecule is completely symmetrical down the middle, it doesn't matter which nitrogen you move electrons around with, so we'll just pick the one here on the left. The trick here is, anytime you see an atom that has lone pairs on it, that is one position away from a double or triple bond, those lone pairs can, at least on paper or on board here, shift. The way we do that is we grab the lone pair and push them down here, and when they get pushed down there, they turn into a, an additional bond here, in this case, between the nitrogen and carbon. But we can't just leave it there or else that carbon would be surrounded by five bonds or 10 electrons. So when we push this lone pair down here, we have to push these pi electrons up onto the oxygen. In that process, of course, these pi electrons transform back into a lone pair. Let's redraw the new molecule that is formed when we make that electron movement. This perceived movement of electrons is what we call resonance or resonance delocalization. And each of these different molecules are called resonance contributors. Now, in reality, the actual molecule exists somewhere in between these two, as well as all of the potential reasonable resonance contributors you could think of, such as ones coming from the nitrogen over here doing the same thing. In any event, the actual molecule is sort of a blend of all of them. As far as this question goes, however, we just need to draw these two, because there aren't any others that look super reasonable without giving 10 electrons to some atom or having only six electrons around another or something like that. The point is you just draw a flow of lone pairs in and then pi bonds out. Now let's figure out bond angle. Now, just looking at this nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen bond right there, what would it be if there was no resonance? Yeah, here this nitrogen is surrounded by four things. It's a hydrogen, a hydrogen, a lone pair, and a carbon. Now, four things in a perfect world has a tetrahedral geometry with an angle of 109.5. We've learned elsewhere, link in the description below, that lone pairs take up a little bit more room and hence would constrain or push that bond to be a little bit less than 109.5, somewhere around 107 or so give or take maybe a little bit of wiggle room. But go down here. What if this molecule was completely unmovable and had no resonance? What would the bond angle between these hydrogens be? Well, that's different. Now I've got a nitrogen that's only surrounded by three things, hydrogen, hydrogen, and carbon. Now the ideal bond angle around such an atom is three things in a complete triangle plane, or in other words, trigonal planar geometry, separated by 120 degrees per group. Now, as I already stated, the actual molecule exists somewhere in between the two, which means that this bond angle is actually going to be somewhere in between 107 and 120. And the closest answer that we have that encapsulates that is option D that says between 109 and 120 degrees.